Hi there. I'd like to share with you a few thoughts and reflections around Jeremiah's letter to the exiles in Babylon in chapter 29. It's a passage I've been living with quite a lot over the last few weeks and I've brought it to a few of our churches and it does seem to be a passage where which speaks into our current situation as we continue through these Covid pandemic restrictions and maybe you're asking the question how long how much do we have to continue in this situation and what is God doing in the midst of all these uh, difficulties that we're facing so let's read the scriptures together and then I'll share some reflections around the passage Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 4 to 14 the letter of Jeremiah to the exiles in Babylon. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When seventy years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfil my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Of all the places in the scriptures which maybe speak into our current situation, I think it is the experience of exile when God's people were taken from the kingdom of Judah into Babylon that most speaks powerfully to us today. A lot of people have uh, made that point. It was a different world that they moved into. Of course, far more dramatic and far more traumatic than the experience we've had. But nevertheless, taken away from what was familiar and put into a new place. Isolated, away from homes and families. And in some ways there are parallels to our experience of the Covid exile, if you like. It was a tough, tough experience, but in retrospect, it was a necessary experience. It was an experience which God tolerated, allowed, in fact, even one could say planned. It was predicted by Jeremiah and other prophets. And it was through this exile that God did a transformational work within his people. Let's think what happened as a result of the exile. Israel lost its monarchy. There was no longer any king ruling. And out of that loss was birthed the messianic hope. The hope that one day the people would be given a king above all kings. A perfect king. A king who would reign in righteousness and justice. Who would lead people to follow God in ways that their monarchies had never done before. And so our Christmas hope 
is born out of the exile. There was no temple. The temple was destroyed by Babylon. And so in exile, the people had to get used to a life of prayer and worship that wasn't dependent upon a building. Does that ring any bells? And so it was that uh, the synagogue developed, the, the gathering of people, as of which, of course, the Christian church emerged in Jesus' time. That beginnings of the synagogue happened as a result of the exile. The people had to deal with national shame because they had been defeated by another power. And it, the gods of Babylon had triumphed over the god of, the, of Israel, of Judah. Yahweh had been defeated by Marduk and Bel. And so uh, there was this sense of, of, of God's name being trashed. And yet, even though the people were now living amongst those who worshipped other gods, they didn't become syncretistic. They didn't uh, compromise and uh, uh, start worshipping the Babylonian gods and seeing them as more uh, powerful than their own god. No, actually, curiously, paradoxically, the exile cured the people of God, cured the Jews of their idolatry. It was in exile that they realised that they had to preserve their own identity and to do so was to rally around Yahweh, their God. They had questions. God, why have you allowed this to happen? God, where are you? Maybe we have questions now that are like that. But out of that questioning came a deeper faith, a faith that was able to withstand trauma, that was able to persevere through crisis and hardship. And they were exiled into another nation. And so that started to change the orientation of God's people from being very, very much isolated and separate to engaging with other cultures. The beginnings of the sense of call to be a light to all nations, to the Gentiles, began as a result of the exile. So what does Jeremiah say to these people who've been taken over into Babylon and who are having to face this strange new exile world? Well, the first thing he says is settle down, build houses, plant vineyards, get married, give your sons and daughters into marriage. You're going to be there for a long time. It's going to take much longer than you anticipate. And I guess for us, the COVID exile is taking much longer than we might have anticipated all the way back in March when we first went into lockdown. Jeremiah speaks against the false prophets who are basically... Uh, the good news prophets, if you like, the ones who are saying, don't worry, God is on our side. We'll be back in the promised land. We'll be back in our own homeland within a, a few weeks or months or a year at the most. God's going to overcome Babylon and restore us to our land. But Jeremiah says, don't listen to those false prophets. Those are telling lies. The truth is, it's going to be a long time. In fact, you who receive this letter are probably going to die in Babylon. You'll never get to see the promised land again. Now what if this pandemic were to go on for as long as Jeremiah says the exile would go on? How would we feel about that? Living differently for the rest of our lives? Well we don't know even with a vaccine whether we will still have to uh, live somewhat differently for a few years at least until we really overcome this pandemic and after this pandemic there will be other worldwide challenges that might re result or cause a change in lifestyles. We are living in uncertain times. We have to get used to this uncertainty. And in a sense, we have to settle down and live with this uncertainty. We have to settle down and go with the flow. That's what Jeremiah says to the exiles. Get involved in the life of the nation where you're living. Don't resist it, but be part of it. And so we are to go with the flow of this pandemic, not just to resist it or just simply wait until it's all over, but to learn the new rhythm of life of pandemic living and for this to become something that becomes normal and OK, our new way of life, because it's only as we adapt to this new way of life that then 
that transformation can happen. If we just simply seek to get through this and then we can go back to the way things were, we will have not learn a thing from this pandemic. And this whole last year will have been a complete waste of what God has wanted to do with you and with me. Second thing Jeremiah says is seek the well-being of the community into which I have placed you. Now that was a hard thing for the people of Judah to hear because this was the enemy. These were the conquerors. These were the, 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 the pagans, the, 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 the ones that, that God hated in their mind. And now Jeremiah is saying, your job is to bless them. Your job is to pray for them. Your job is to seek their well-being and prosperity. So it's quite a radical word that they're hearing. But to seek to be a blessing in the place where I put you. And in return, you will be blessed. That is your key to blessing. And so for us in the pandemic, maybe God has opened doors into your community. Yes, we're isolated and we're separated, but there are doors that have opened online. There are doors that have opened uh, originally every Wednesday night when we did the clap for the NHS. Doors uh, that have opened for us to reach out to neighbours in our streets. And God would say to us, seek the well-being of your community. In fact, at this time, our communities need the church like never before, because the, the mental health problems will be huge. The, uh, the difficulties that people will be facing financially are huge. People losing jobs on into the economic uh, crisis that will be the result of this pandemic. The church needs to be out there praying, working for the prosperity of our communities. Are you doing that in your community? Are you committing to doing that? Are you looking for ways to do that as you move on? The third thing Jeremiah says is stay faithful because God is faithful to you. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. Now, we often quote that verse, usually out of context. The context, of course, is that the people think that God is out to harm them. That God is uh, has plans, but they're plans for bad and not for good. They've experienced God's plans. They're plans that have seen uh, death and destruction on a huge scale. They may be wondering, what kind of a God is this that we have? But God says, no, yes, I've, I've been tough, but no, I am a God who still loves you. I am a God who still cares for you. I'm still a God who has good plans for your lives. And sometimes to enable the good to happen, we have to go through the hardships. That's the only way that uh, deeper work of God can happen. And in my experience, and maybe in yours, it is often through the hardest experiences that the deepest work of transformation is done. So let's actually welcome the hardships if we can see that they are part of God's plan for good, for transformation, for a deeper work in us as his church. Let God transform his church through hardship, if necessary, if that's what it takes to so take us out of our idolatries, our false gods, our distractions, our materialism, our consumerism, whatever else it might be that we worship or follow instead of Jesus Christ or as well as Jesus Christ, but don't give Jesus the preeminence. And then finally, Jeremiah says, seek God. You'll find God if you seek him with all of your heart. Now is the time for seeking God. Just when you think God is against you, when God's abandoned you, if you seek him, you'll find him. You'll find him in a foreign land. You'll find him in a strange place. You'll find that he's there as well for you. And for us, God is here to be found in this strange world of pandemic. God is here for us, even in the midst of hardships. But the time is to seek him. We've had space through the pandemic, a bit of extra time to pray. New prayer gatherings have, have grown up, maybe in your church, in your experience, you've found more space to pray and more groups to pray with. That's great. And let's make that our ongoing priority, to seek God wholeheartedly together and alone. And we will find God and God will do that work in us and God will be transforming us as we seek him. So then those four things, 
settle down, go with the flow of the pandemic. Seek the blessing and prosperity of the community around you. Stay faithful to God, even when it's tough, because he remains faithful to you. And seek him wholeheartedly. And I believe this exile, this COVID exile, will be transformative for the church if we truly allow God to do his work. We're becoming less reliant on our buildings. We're being freed from the, uh, the walls of our buildings, which so often uh, keep us separate from the world around. We're, we're more incarnated. We're more out there in our community. And that's the way church should be. That's the missional um, aspect of church. And let's seek to keep that balance, even when we can use our buildings again. Maybe we've become less reliant on Sunday worship for, for many of our churches. All the effort and energy goes into gathering on a Sunday. And, and that's how we judge success when we have bums on seats in our Sunday service. But actually, that's not really all that church is about. Yes, we are to gather and to worship God and to have fellowship. Absolutely. But we can do that in lots of other ways. We can do that in small scale ways. And what I see happening is that church is becoming smaller scale. That we're able to be church and do church and engage in worship and prayer and mission in our twos and threes and smaller groups. And actually that's, again, I think a way that God is wanting to change us. And we don't have to put all our energy into one act of worship on a Sunday, but actually our energy should go into the mission that God has for us and the support of one another and discipling of one another day to day. Let's get the balance redressed. Maybe as well we've become less reliant on ministers and speaking as a minister, that's no bad thing. Many of us in ministry have had to totally reassess what are we about, what are we doing, because what we were trained for we can't do anymore. Ministers obviously are a great gift to churches and I still believe that. But we can, at times, de-skill our congregations because congregations expect us to do things for them. They look to us as ministers to always lead, to always initiate, to always be the ones who have the ideas. And yet, in the pandemic, maybe others have started to come to the fore. Others have taken initiatives. Others have been able to get on and live the Christian life without having to rely on the minister to do everything for them. And again, that's a healthy thing. We are to be disciples together ministers to enable us and equip us but very much to equip us so that we can stand on our own feet as disciples so we don't have to be spoon-fed teaching week by week but we could get that ourselves from God in prayer and study and from one another and I think we've become more creative we've learnt to do mission in new ways we've learnt new technology and I hope that we won't just stop there, that we'll continue to seek to reach out digitally in mission. That we'll continue to find new and creative ways to engage in meeting the needs of our communities. That this creativity and experimentation will be a more permanent feature and culture of all our churches. And then finally in this COVID exile, I think we've learned to become a little bit more real. We've rediscovered lament. Those prayers in the Psalms that say it ain't OK. God, it's tough. God, I don't feel you close. God, you've given me tough things to have to deal with. We're not just triumphalistic all the time, as some branches of the church can tend to be. We recognise, yes, God is the God of resurrection. But he's also the God of crucifixion. And we have to have that balance of joy and, and a victory and ultimate hope that, that good will overcome evil. But there is a sacrificial life to be led. There are tough experiences that we have to go through. That evil and sin are still prevalent in our world and within the church. So let's be honest about what isn't right. Let's address what isn't right. Let's be a bit more humble about ourselves. Openly so towards others, because I think one of the things that keeps people out of our churches, people who are exploring faith, is that sense, well, I can't join a church like that because they're all holier than that. They're all perfect. Uh, and I'm aware of my problems. So I, I wouldn't feel comfortable in this nice, clean, spotless, 
Christian world where they'll all be looking at me as someone who's different. So, let God use this exile, this COVID exile, to transform your life, your church, our association, our nation. Let's pray together. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that above and beyond all that we're going through, we have the promise through Jesus that you are with us always to the very end of the age. We have your promise that your plans are good plans. Help us to believe in those good plans at this time. Help us welcome them and embrace them wholeheartedly. Give us courage to embrace whatever hardships you might have so that we be transformed. Give us courage to look to this different life that you have for us as churches. Give us courage to believe that you have good things for us. Give us courage to be willing to risk all kinds of changes, transformation new ways of being church, new ways of doing mission, new ways of relating, new ways of being involved in our communities as you would lead us to let you have control of us and for us to release control. Raise up the whole church. Enable us all to play our part in our ones and twos, wherever we live, serving you as disciples of Jesus. And may you do your good work in and through us to the glory of your name. Amen.